Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I appreciate you stopping by for today's video. I'm having a quick start guide tutorial for integrating your DXM wireless controller over to Siemens TIA portal. So using Profinet Communications. So I've created this quick start guide, but if you have any questions, uh, just comment down below, leave me a note or email me. All my information is in the description box below. I'm also gonna post the links to the software that I used and any the GSD files that you'll need to download will be down there as well. And I guess that's it. So let's just get started. This is gonna be a quick, quick start guide. I did wanna make a note first that you cannot use Profinet on all of our DXM devices. So you wanna make sure that the product you have is not one that is not included in here. The DXM 700, which is this one, that is included. All of these are included, the DXM 1200 and the 1000. Um, and also the DXM R90, our snap signal controller, this also has Profinet on there. Uh, you wanna be careful not to have the DXM 100 or the DXM 150. Those do not have Profinet IO because they just have different hardware. So that's not enabled in there. So be sure you have that checked off. Make sure you look at the part number. Uh, for this example in this tutorial, we are using the DXM configuration tool software. We're using TIA portal and we are using GSD file that you can download from our website. And I've created this uh, PowerPoint that you can have if you want it, um, just email me and you're more than welcome to have it. And uh, all the links, everything's hyperlinked in there as well. If you're a Siemens person, you can probably scroll ahead to the very end of maybe you missed a step or something, but this tutorial takes you from like the very beginning of starting a, a project all the way to just seeing and monitoring that value to make sure that you have communication between the DXM and the PLC. So let's go ahead and actually start with the DXM. I do recommend starting here. So once you've actually configured all of your register mapping and all of the logic that you want inside of the DXM, which I don't know that you would be using logic if you had, if you're already working with a PLC, I recommend you do all of that there. And, uh, but you do need to do some, some register mapping, I'm sure. After you finish all of that, there's really only one step to setting up the, the, the settings in DXM configuration tool software. And that's just gonna be here under the settings tab. You'll have to click enable Profinet. And then just go ahead and do a file save and hit the DXM and send configuration to DXM button here. There's no need to change the IP address. There's, it's, that's not gonna be necessary because the PLC will override anything and actually I advise you not to change the IP address. It could cause a little bit of conflict. So just leave it all as it is. Go ahead and open up TIA portal. If you're starting a new project, go ahead and create new project um, or open up your database. But if you're creating a new project here, um, just select the hardware that you have with the, with the right version and click add. On um, first thing I guess we're gonna do is give the PLC an Ethernet IP address if you haven't done that already. And TIA portal is really nice. It just, um, you, you get this nice little workspace area that allows you to see your hardware. So just double click on that green square, that's your ethernet port. You just double click on that, it should prompt this whole window that allows you to add your IP address. Now it's time to add the GSD file. So go ahead and download that if you haven't already and do extract it and just click on options here and scroll down, you'll see an option for manage general station description file. And so that'll prompt this window here to pop up. And so now you can click on the three button, the three dots and look for that source path where, wherever you extracted that file into. Click that checkbox and click the install button. So really important here, um, if you're on the network view tab here, and then if you go to hardware catalog, uh, you do have to kind of scroll to, scroll through a few subfolders to find our product. So it's kind of a little bit hidden, but if you click here on other field devices and you click Profinet IO, and then you click on IO, and then you find banner engineering, and then right in there, you should find the one port device underneath the DXM series. So once you find that, grab it and then just drop it onto this workspace. And you should see a blue, um, 
a blue space here that tells you that it's okay to drop it there. Um, once you do that, go ahead and you do need to rename that DXM. So uh, if you just hover, put your cursor on top of that DXM, the bold DXM letters, and you can rename that. I renamed it to DXM underscore one. Okay? So once it has the profi name, it's time to make the profi net connection. So go ahead and click on that green square and just just drag that line over to the ethernet port on the DXM and it'll be a dashed line. So you wanna click connections and that'll make it a solid green line. That's what you're looking for to establish the connection. So now it's time to set the IP address for the DXM. So go ahead and just double click on that icon and it should open up this uh, device view. And if you go to ethernet address and select that IP address, give it the right IP address that you're looking for. Now we add the memory modules. In this part, you, you wanna stay in that device view window. And if you go to hardware catalog, you should see this module subfolder with all of the input and output modules. It's like adding a card to your PLC. So what you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna do is just drag and drop the right data size files for you. So in this example, um, I have just one local register because I'm just wanted to, wanting to prove the communication to the input side of the DXM. I just I want to see um, some vib vibration data coming into that PLC. And so it really, for me, I could have just I could have used a 64 bytes integer input. Um, but what you do is just drag and drop this into this space. So your inputs are allotted for slots one through six and your outputs like this one that's highlighted, um, it starts on slot seven through nine. So you have, and whenever you drag and drop it, you get those little blue dashed lines. So it guides you to where you can drop it and where it's available to drop. So once that is assigned to your PLC and that space is created, that if you need, you can reference the instruction manual. There's a whole page in the Profinet section that tells you like the max data size available. Um, if you have a really large DXM program, maybe you're doing like a solutions guide, then you're gonna want to um, probably go with the 500 bytes. So, so all of this is in bytes, by the way. So just, um, and local registers are full of one word. So it's two bytes, one word. So just keep that in mind as you're looking for your inputs and your outputs. So this is kind of a gotcha for me. Um, I didn't realize you had to do this for your PLC and for your DXM. So I don't know, I just, I, I guess I totally missed this part when I first did it, but, um, but you don't, it's very important. Otherwise it will never connect. So <laughs> if you go ahead and click on the project tree under PLC, that subfolder, there's an online and diagnostics tab here. Um, so if you double click on that, it will take you to this window and under functions and assign IP address, you wanna assign the MAC ID to that IP address. So we have to do this for every device on the network. So we gotta do it for the PLC and the DXM. At least that's how it worked for me. And let's see. Okay, so once you click that button, once you click the accessible devices here, it'll prompt this window and so what you got to do here is select the PNIE interface and click the start search button. Once you click the start search button, it's going to start looking for any device on the network that it finds. So you got to wait until this turns a solid yellow before selecting the device, the PLC device that we have here. So go ahead and, and, and before it does that, these two switch around on you. So <laughs> make sure you don't select the wrong one. I did that too. So click PLC one in this case, and just click apply and it will take you back to this page. But now what we gotta do is do the same process, repeat this for the DXM. So if you go to your project tree and just scroll down, you should see a, a folder that says ungrouped devices. And that's where the DXM subfolder is gonna be with that online and diagnostics option. Okay, so once you find that, just highlight it and, or double click it. And that'll open up that same window we saw earlier. Click functions and assign IP address and go to your accessible devices. And that again will prompt the same window 
and remember to wait for the solid yellow. Once you click the start, it'll it'll eventually turn solid yellow and you'll click the right um, device that you're, you're looking for and you'll click the apply button. We're ready to save and download to the PLC. So you'll wanna make sure you save your project and then click that down arrow to download your project to your PLC. So click through the prompts here that it gives you to load and, and OK and all of that. So if you want to see your tags live, what you want to do is create a watch table. And so you can go here on your project tree and add new watch table on this Excel sheet. On these boxes, you can just click on it with your cursor and add uh, tag um, 68. So IW68 with the percent sign. And you can format that however you want. You can see it in hex or, or binary. I chose to see it in decimals because that's what I'm used to. And uh, we'll just go ahead and click go online up here and then the play button to and your 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 values should turn up yellow once you have data in there. And that's it, guys. So I really appreciate you watching this and thank you for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks.